I've just finished filming with BBC Homes under the hammer for the property behind me. Uh, showing how we bought this property at auction and refurb it. And if you want to learn more how to invest in property, watch this video as I'm going to share four steps of how you can get started in property. Okay, so you're interested in getting started in property, but before you run out there to put any deposits on any properties or even viewing any, you need to make the greatest investment which is in yourself because you are the greatest asset more than any other property or any other asset class you can invest in. And for you to make informed decision choices within investing in property, you need to make sure that you are well equipped and you have all the knowledge you need to be able to be effective at that. So first of all, go out there and educate yourself. Immerse yourself in as much information as possible regarding property. I read books and watch videos and take on courses. You don't have to pay over the top for courses. There are many other people out there who are giving very good material for a very low price. The most important thing is if you are actually going to be putting money and investing in property it's very important that you take at the very least a small portion of that amount and invest it in yourself so that that way you are much more equipped the more knowledge you have the more options you have the more knowledge you have the more uh, ideas and solutions you can come up with when you face different hurdles and the thing about education is not just about reading and learning for learning sake but it's so that you can apply it when you go out there and put in those offers so i would suggest the first step you want to take is is educating yourself by learning as much as you can about property and then you are in a better position to go into the industry because when you educate yourself you will find out about different property strategies maybe you only think there's only buy to let but maybe you can buy to let and you can do hmos you can do flips you could do uh, developments you could do land assembly there are so many different strategies in property but you will never know about them until you immerse yourself in the world of property and once you have done that you can actually then identify which strategy best meets your investment uh, objectives because we all have different objectives when it comes to investment maybe you're looking for passive income maybe you're looking for capital gains uh, until you actually understand all the terminology and you understand all the strategies you can't really really execute and invest in a wise process that is well informed. So you're talking about investing in yourself, but we all learn in different ways. Some of us, we are better at reading books and some of us, we are better at watching videos, but some of you are hands-on. So maybe go out there and find a mentor, someone who can sit down with you and walk you through the ropes, or go and work for someone or a company that is investing in property so that you can internship for them for free or even if you can get paid while you're doing it, even the better that way you can learn while you work and while you watch others who have done this because ultimately you want to be at a better place in terms of your knowledge of the industry before you start putting your own money or any uh, one else's money into any deals that you might be considering so the first step is get yourself educated get yourself are knowledgeable ultimately invest in yourself put the first deposit in you deposit knowledge the de deposit wisdom deposit all the techniques that you need to know uh, before you go into the field and make your first investment step number two you have to get into the right circles and connect with people who are doing what you want to achieve this can be by connecting with them at business clubs or property clubs or maybe go on clubhouse and listen to conversations and connect with people who are already doing what you want to do. Furthermore, you could connect with people on social media, review your timeline and you know maybe change all of these other people who are posting jokes and the food that they're eating and change that to be following people who are doing exactly what you want to do or implementing the property strategy you want to also implement. 
so that that way in the back of your mind even subconsciously you are being educated even in your leisure time because every time you go on instagram you see someone like myself coming up talking about the strategy that i'm doing and the thing that i've just finished all of that begins to change your mindset and transform how you think and actually it, it literally makes the goal that you're trying to achieve even smaller. I have started out in so many sectors and when I started out by myself in my own corner, I would set my goals so little because they were limited to what I can think and to what I can envision. But the moment I started connecting with other individuals, I begin to actually dream bigger. I begin to see what is possible. I begin to uh, lift up my eyes and see a wider picture for where I was by myself. So it's very important to connect with other people who are doing what you want to do because ultimately you'll be the average of the people who you hang around with. So if you're hanging around with people who are not in property and those are the majority of people who speak into your life or who are connected to you, therefore you'll be limited to that. It doesn't mean that you have to discount them, but it means that you need to add people to your circles who are already where you want to go. Uh, and that way, all of that knowledge and all of their experiences can be passed on to you through conversation, through watching their posts, and ultimately, it can give you a sense of confidence that if they can do it, I can do it too because you will end up seeing that they are just as human as you are. You have the same type of faculties. It's just a case of they are applying themselves. And even those days where you're feeling low and you are not motivated, but the moment you see someone on your timeline or someone at a property club talking about how they overcome certain challenges, all of that will spare you on to be able to get up and achieve the goals that you have set. So make sure you connect with people who are doing what you want to do and that will help you on your journey of investing and starting out in property. Tip number three, choose a strategy and make a plan. So first of all, in property, there are many strategies out there. As I've stated, as you study property, you will find that there are strategies such as buy to let, HMOs, a service apartments, but once you narrow down to maybe one or two strategies, make a plan of how you are going to execute that. Plan out how it's going to look in five years. When do you want to go? Because once you know where you want to go, you can come back in the beginning and say, okay, my goal for this year is to have one buy to let property that I will have and in five years time the objective is to maybe have 10 or 20 that will create a passive stream of income that you can leave your current job or leave the life that you want how you want to leave it. So just sit down and make a simple plan. I'm not talking about sitting down and writing a big old business plan with 1500 pages. No, just a simple plan on one A4 piece of paper that you can see and articulate as to where you are trying to go and how you are going to implement the strategy and make it measurable, make it a smart plan whereby it's, it's measurable, it's specific and you can actually sit down and articulate that plan to anyone who might ask you what you want to do. And then when you have set out that plan, find how you can enter the market at the lowest level of capital possible. Even if you have the money available to you, it will be wise for you to maybe find a low entry point in a capital market, let's say for example, you want to invest in, a, in property and you live in a big city and it costs about $400,000 or pounds to invest in one bedroom flat. You may want to maybe consider a commuter town, which is not too far from where you live, but that has cheaper properties and has up and coming neighborhoods. That might actually be a better option 
because that way you're not putting too much of your capital on your first project and then you could end up making a mistake and costing yourself so much. But if you can narrow it down and find a low entry point where you can put little money down, and little money is relative, it's relative to how much money you have. Uh, if you have a hundred thousand, little money is twenty thousand. If you have one million, little money is maybe fifty thousand pounds. So if that's so relative, you have to be the judge of that. But find a place where you can invest in a low capital requirement area whereby you're not putting all of your disposable money on that first project because ultimately there are lessons you will learn and it's better to start small learn the lesson and then you can scale as fast as you want to bigger and better projects let's say if you do not even have the money to start you can find a lower entry point by maybe becoming uh, an agent become a broker, become maybe an introducer when you're finding properties and introducing to, to them to investors. That way you don't actually have to invest in the properties yourself. All you have to do is maybe set up a website and have a business card and have some sort of an ident corporate identity so that it shows that you are a professional outfit. But ultimately you are getting started in property without having to invest anything, but by introducing deals and actually getting other people to pay you a commission or an introductory fee. So whatever strategy you're thinking of, Plan it out, map it out, put the steps and look at how you can execute it from a low entry point, whether it be from a capital or for literally a monetary point of view in terms of how much you're putting in. That way you can learn the ropes and then you can scale up to as much as you feel comfortable. Okay, my final point for this is build a team. Ultimately, no man is an island, and when it comes to property, you're not able to do it all by yourself, no matter how good you are, because you need so many different players to engage with you at every stage of your transaction. So if you're buying property, you need a good lawyer who's going to be able to help you go through the transactions that you have. But before you even get to a lawyer, you need a good broker who will tell you what finance products are out there that you can use as part of your strategy. Some people don't even know that you can use bridging loans or you can use certain type of finances that will allow your money to go further than you actually think. That you will never know unless you have a good broker. You need to build relationships with good tradesmen who can even advise you before you buy a property how much it will cost you to refurb and where you can save money. You will need a good letting agent. There are so many players, as you can see from the screen, who can input into your investment process. But ultimately, it's about building those relationships even before you buy your first deal. Even if you are a deal sourcer, even more so, you need to be building relationships and building a team of other, maybe, agents who you can introduce the deal to and they introduce it to their own uh, client base and you share a commission. There are many ways you can do property, but ultimately you always will need a team to work with you and uh, to help you in the process of investing because no man can do it all by themselves.